Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Mirage F1C200, which is a currently Tier 7 11.3 BR premium jet fighter for the French Air Tech Tree. This vehicle currently comes in a pack that includes the Mirage F1C200, 20 days of premium time, and 2,500 Golden Eagles, all for the current price of $69.99 USD. With that said, I'll go over everything that you need to know about this premium Mirage variant, including its stats how it plays, its strengths and weaknesses, I'll give it some scores in several key areas, and then I'll give my final recommendation on if I feel this vehicle is worth purchasing or not. That said, if you like this kind of video, please consider subscribing, but without further ado, let's get into it. Now to start, I'll place the stats here on the side of the screen. Stats to know are its top speed, turn time, and fairly low rate of climb. Now for how it plays. The F1C200 is just an F1C with a refueling probe, essentially making this into a premium Mirage F1C. With that said, it plays identically to the F1C. As such, the F1C200 is blessed with a decent, though still somewhat subpar, engine, good maneuverability, and missiles that will make this plane better than it otherwise would be. This is because the F1C200 has access to the excellent Magic 2 missiles, of which are among the best missiles currently in War Thunder. These missiles are all aspect, have excellent agility, and have a fairly large explosive charge. Unfortunately, you can only carry two of them at max. On the plus side, the F1C200 also has access to the larger R530 and Super 530 missiles, of which come in radar and infrared flavors. With these, the F1C200 can effectively take part in mid-range combat and be fairly successful, especially with the Super 530 missiles. But, of course, being that the performance on this plane is lacking, you'll want to stay a bit in the background, firing your long-range missiles first, then switching to the close-range Magic 2 missiles either when needed or when done done with your larger missiles. It can get tricky switching up between the various missile types on this aircraft because it kind of forces you to have two, sometimes three different missile types, so you'd be best to pick one type, use it all, and then move on to the next type of missile and so forth. But once you are in combat, this plane is surprisingly nimble, despite having a fairly mediocre engine. It also retains energy fairly well, which mitigates some of the acceleration issues. But in short, this plane is essentially a good engine away from being able to do everything and as such, its playstyle is suited for those that are cautious, utilize mid-range missiles, and like maneuverability. Oh, and if I have not already mentioned it, the Mirage F1C200 comes with over 250 countermeasures, which is fantastic and thoroughly increases survivability. Now for close area support, this plane is a bit more basic, but still surprisingly capable. It can carry upwards of 3,000 kilograms of ordnance, which is very good, especially considering that it has ballistic computers for both bombs and rockets. Though it lacks laser guided weapons, it can still deliver its dumb weapons with precision. To this point, it has access to the great snap rockets and bombs ranging from 250 kilograms to 2,000 pounds, and can also carry 30 millimeter gun pods under the wings as well. In short, while not stylish, this plane has all the tools that you need to be successful in close air support. Combine this with its still usable speed and tons of countermeasures, and you also have a plane that should be able to make it back to base fairly often for a reload. Just stay low with this plane and you should be met with success. And now let's get into its strengths and weaknesses, and first for its strengths. As an excellent assortment of missiles, from the awesome all aspect Magic 2s to radar guided Matra Magic 530Fs, and a thermal or radar guided 530 underneath the plane. It can also carry up to two 30mm cannons underneath the wings. For its second strength, it has good maneuverability. Third, it's also got a great roll rate. For its fourth strength, it has a total of 252 countermeasures standard, which should make it so that you can run with a mixed setup up very, very easily. For its fifth strength, it has ballistic computers for both rockets and bombs. Beyond this, it has a good mix of ordnance for close air support applications and can carry up to 3,000 kilograms of weapons in total. For its seventh strength, it has good energy retention in turns. For its eighth strength, it has a good radar, but you do have to switch settings from standard for it to work well. And finally, it has premium RP and SL bonuses. Now for its weaknesses. The 30mm DEFA cannons on this plane are among the worst 30mm cannons at this BR. They are not incredibly accurate and are surprisingly weak 
weak. For its second weakness, acceleration, at least relative to this BR, is subpar. You will consistently reach the battlefield almost everyone else, and will have a tough time gaining back speed in the middle of a dogfight. For its third weakness, the Mirage F1C200 can only carry two Magic 2 missiles, while the other missile options are much heavier and not as versatile as the Magic 2s. And finally, while it has good ordnance options for close air support, it still lacks guided weapons, of which are becoming much more common by this BR. Now with that said, let's get into how I score this plane. And to start with dogfighting and air RB, I give it an 8 out of 10. The F1C200 has an excellent mix of missiles, decent enough performance and maneuverability that combine to make this into a surprisingly capable fighter. While performance is unfortunately mediocre, the Mirage makes up for it at least partially with good maneuverability, good energy retention, and missiles that do the work for you, namely the Match or Magic 2s. Even without the Magic 2s, you can still mount a Heat Seeker or Radar Guided Missile underneath the fuselage, and two excellent Radar Guided Match or Super 530F missiles underneath the wings. With everything combined, the F1C200 feels very nice, and like there is no challenge that's too daunting, it is more or less prepared for any type of air-to-air -air combat, making it a veritable Swiss army knife of the skies, but of course instead of Swiss, it is French. Now for close air support, I give this a 6 out of 10. The Mirage F1C200 suffers slightly in that it can only carry so much ordnance, which is less than some similar BR Western fighters, such as the F4 Phantom II, though it is still, at very least, on the upper end of average in terms of total carrying capacity, especially for fighters. The F1C200 can carry a variety of ordnance, such as bombs that weigh up to 2,000 pounds and the excellent snap rockets that are deadly when combined with its ballistic computers. Unfortunately, it lacks guided ordnance of any kind, but through its decent carrying capacity alone, mixed with the power of its ordnance, plus its good speed and countermeasures, or at least decent speed, the Mirage F1C200 is a fairly capable CAS plane. Is it the best? No, but it is a great option for those that want a competent CAS plane that doubles as a much better air cover and dogfighting aircraft. Overall, I give the F1C200 a 7.5 out of 10. This is a surprisingly great plane and is arguably the best premium tier 7 aircraft to come in the Apex Predators update. It quite possibly has the best mix of traits, including great missiles, decent enough cannons, workable performance, great maneuverability, and a very good CAS capability. In all, while not perfect in any given role, it can do pretty much everything very well, especially when it's coming to air-to-air -air combat. So do I recommend this vehicle? Of all the $70 premium aircraft released in the Apex Predators update, this is likely the most balanced one, and by a fairly decent margin. It does everything pretty well whether it's air-to-air -air or air-to-ground. With the exception of subpar performance that isn't outright poor, this plane is fantastic in air battles, as it can carry an assortment of very nice missiles that suit numerous playing styles, though I would personally prefer to have more Magic 2 missiles in lieu of the larger radar guided missiles. Regardless, because of its overall Overall competency in pretty much everything, I can safely say that yes, I do recommend the Mirage F1C200 and give it my Tankenstein seal of approval. This feels like when the F5C was released for the Americans, but obviously better due to its enhanced capabilities. In my opinion, the best premium planes in War Thunder are multi-role, and the F1C200 fits that perfectly. So yes, if you want to spend $70 on an aircraft, this is likely the best one of the bunch, at least of the ones I've reviewed thus far. Far. But of course, it sells for $70, so buyer beware. But with all that said, please let me know what you think of the F1C200 and of this video in the comments below. Additionally, if you would like, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel, as both things would help me tremendously in my eternal quest to rule the world. Either way, thanks again, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.